first, I just wanted to start off uh, for some of you that uh, may not be familiar with uh, Lake Jacksonville, is where this uh, project was conducted, and just kind of describe a little bit of the, the uh, history of, of Lake Jacksonville and the, uh, the trouble and, and issues that we've had with uh, Hydrilla in the reservoir. Um, of course, Lake Jacksonville is uh, located about three miles southwest of Jacksonville, Texas, in Cherokee County. It's a, uh, approximately 1,200 acres, um, and it's a rather uh, old reservoir. It was impounded in 1957. Um, it's, uh, locally, it's considered a, a, a pretty nice bass lake. Um, uh, the record uh, that come out of the lake was about uh, 15 pounds. Uh, in, uh, in Lake Jacksonville, we've uh, uh, resorted to uh, stocking uh, grass carp. Uh, the city first applied for a permit uh, back in 2005. Um, however, that was uh, required to be resubmitted uh, due to delays in constructing a barrier along the uh, spillway of the reservoir. And uh, grass carp were initially stocked in May of uh, 2006. Uh, in about 2006, Hydrilla had uh, rapidly expanded to uh, cover approximately 268 acres. Um, and so initially I wanted to uh, stock uh, grass carp at about uh, five per hydrilla acre. Um, uh, this was considered a much more cost-effective measure than uh, what the city had been doing in, uh, in recent years, which was uh, treating the hydrilla with herbicide, which was uh, much more expensive. Uh, by 2007, uh, hydrilla had uh, increased to about 348 acres, um, which was uh, right, right about the time that the grass carp were introduced. So unfortunately, the, uh, the stockings was, uh, since the uh, hydrilla had rapidly expanded, the stockings were a little low, uh, stocking rate for uh, hydrilla per acre. So we uh, wanted to increase that stocking. Uh, so another uh, 2,500 grass carp were stocked in 2007. However, just, uh, just after those fish were stocked to increase that uh, stocking rate to 10 fish per hydrilla acre, we had a massive uh, flood due to rains in 2007, um, which uh, scoured the, uh, the hydrilla and uh, re rapidly reduced that uh, total acreage coverage to about 115 acres. So that was uh, likely not an effect of stocking the grass carp, but just due to environmental conditions. Uh, native plants in the reservoir were uh, approximately about 110 acres uh, surrounding the reservoir. And uh, of course, as a result of the flood and uh, also with the grass carp, uh, we uh, reduced uh, hydrilla to uh, trace levels to less than an acre. And uh, most of that hydrilla was actually located inside the barrier uh, near the spillway where, where grass carp could not access it. Um, and some of the remaining native plants were also located uh, at these northern ends of the reservoirs where uh, some habitat enhancement projects, uh, cages were protecting those species. By uh, 2009, hydrilla was still at trace levels. It was uh, really almost undetectable. Um, so what we really wanted to do, uh, we had uh, just uh, an extraordinary uh, number of grass carp per hydrilla acre in the reservoir. So what we wanted to do uh, was try to restore some of our native species as uh, native plants were really reduced uh, by the grass carp stockings as well. So uh, with some of our, uh, uh, here's just a chart kind of describing the grass carp uh, introductions here and as well as uh, how many are present and just kind of an estimate is uh, uh, present per uh, acre, <coughs> per lake acre here. What we really wanted to do is try to uh, to reduce this uh, amount of grass carp in the reservoir, try to get down to about a, about a, uh, a quarter of a grass carp per, per hydrilla acre in the lake. Um, so uh, with some partnerships that, uh, and some relationships we kind of developed uh, during the uh, alligator gar uh, public hearings, um, kind of got involved with some of the bow anglers and we're, we're working with uh, some members of the Texas Bow Fishing Association to collect information on the alligator gar. Uh, we decided that uh, it might uh, be beneficial to form a kind of a relationship or partnership and maybe provide the Texas Boat Fishing Association with another opportunity to conduct a uh, tournament and, uh, and thereby maybe also reducing some of the grass carp numbers in Lake Jacksonville, uh, which we were really wanting to do. And unfortunately, grass carp are very difficult to, 
to catch, or almost impossible to catch with our traditional fishery sampling methods. So uh, uh, fortunately, we were able to get this uh, approval by uh, uh, our division director, Gary Saul, and as well as law enforcement to, uh, to allow these bow anglers a one-time uh, permission to harvest grass carp. Grass carp are, of course, uh, restricted under a management uh, uh, introduction to, uh, to be harvested by anglers or bow anglers. So this allowed any participants that had this letter during the bow fishing tournament to, uh, to harvest grass carp. Uh, of course, uh, the, uh, the, the tournament received quite a lot of press uh, in locally in the Jacksonville area. We think this can really contributed to a lot of new, uh, new bow anglers and other people that may not have been associated with the uh, Bow Fishing Association to come out and participate. And a lot of bow fishing anglers, uh, I heard uh, at the tournament, had really never had an opportunity to, to uh, shoot grass carp since they are restricted in most of our reservoirs where they're stopped. Uh, we initially had, I believe the number actually was increase of total anglers that attended the tournament was uh, not, not 122, but 128. There were uh, 43 teams that showed up, and I'll let Tony kind of describe uh, what their typical characteristics are uh, here in a moment of, uh, of a grass carp tournament, or a, a tournament in general, but this was a pretty uh, pretty good turnout, and I would almost consider it uh, a, uh, a not the unsuccessful tournament since only 10 grass carp were actually killed during the whole tournament, which we were, uh, we were initially anticipating at least 100 or uh, Preferably uh, a few hundred fish might be removed from the reservoir, but uh, I would almost call this uh, <clears throat> too much of a success as far as, uh, as the anglers showing up. But we had a, a lot of interesting boats. Some of you that, that don't uh, often get to see uh, fan boats and, and bow fishing boats that are uh, rigged up specifically for bow fishing. Um, quite a few teams uh, taken off. The tournament was a night tournament, um, so. Uh, the reservoir at Lake Jacksonville is about 80% uh, developed with houses around 80% of the reservoir. So we were there was some worry that uh, the homeowners would be, uh, be uh, have negative opinions about uh, boats coming around their house with light during the during the night. So the tournament went to about uh, two o'clock uh, in the morning, way in. Uh, of course, uh, we uh, we attended as Parks and Wildlife. Um, Richard Ott and Craig Bones were both heavily involved with. Uh, Getting, a, getting in touch with the Boat Fishing Association and setting this whole tournament up. Uh, there were a lot of homeowners that came out just to kind of watch the uh, festivities of, of the bow anglers going around the shore. Uh, with about 43 boats on a 1,200 acre reservoir, it was uh, a little more crowded than we probably would have liked, but you can see there's not much room between uh, one boat and the next. You can see these lights along the shore. Uh, so uh, we, we feel like the grass carp were a little bit skittish from all the from all the lights and activities, so that may have reduced the uh, harvest numbers. Uh, but overall, it, it uh, really greatly improved uh, a lot of the relationship between uh, Parks and Wildlife and the Texas Bow Fishing Association. And I really think uh, it, uh, it's kind of a pilot uh, project to set up a few a uh, few more uh, partnerships down the road in the future for uh, data collection. And uh, I know uh, Mark Webb is, is also considering conducting a a bow fishing tournament and. Uh, possibly a, a rod and reel tournament on uh, Lake Conroe as well to try to balance out their uh, grass carp numbers in that reservoir. But the uh, weigh-in was uh, fairly successful. Uh, of course, we uh, had a kind of a slow, uh, slow in input of grass carp. Uh, a, lot of the, uh, a lot of the teams, unfortunately, left a little early before the weigh-in because they were just unsuccessful with all the boats out there on the lake in, in general getting any species. But uh, here's kind of some of the results. We had uh, 13 teams uh, place in the tournament. Uh, about eight teams uh, let's see, collected a, a grass cart. And uh, now I'll just uh, invite Tony Reeves up here with the Boat Fishing Association to come up and kind of talk about uh, some of the effects it had on the Boat Fishing Association and uh, some of the results of the tournament that he saw. <coughs> Thank you, Dan. I didn't have a lot uh, put together here. I didn't know it was going to be this big of an audience. <laughs> Again, like we said, uh, there was 128 shooters and 42, 43 teams. And it was mostly comprised of men, but we did have eight women and 10 youth show up. We started a Lone Star Tournament Trail 
in the area made up of three clubs across the state of Texas. And uh, we try to keep the entry fee low, women and children sheep free, and we also keep the hours uh, relatively okay. They're usually eight to two in the morning, so that uh, we can all have a relatively same Sunday. Because when you stay out all night, it tends to not both go with family. We did have a lot of votes. Uh, typically, our turn in front here would be 10 to 15. You know, a good turn would be 25 votes. Um, I was expecting no more than 30. Uh, it was advertised twice, I believe, in area newspapers. And I was getting a lot of calls from guys that hadn't been in any of our tournaments before. Um, so when 43 teams showed up, I was glad I wasn't fishing. Uh, I basically stayed on the shore and hosted the whole tournament uh, and sat in my truck by myself in the car counting money trying to figure out how all the payouts were going to work. Um, <clears throat> you know, we've got some speculations of why it didn't work. Of course, 43 boats came out of water and also being a Saturday afternoon um, on a pretty day there were a lot of boats out there in the day as well. And we all know that, you know, grass carp are pretty skittish, so that's one speculation. Um, we hope we can continue working with Parks and Wildlife to maybe develop some better methods, <clears throat> maybe daytime fishing, or maybe even just a small number of boats, five to ten maybe. Um, I think another reason that a lot of people came out to this shoot is, uh, of course, we knew we couldn't take grass car, but I believe a lot of area people didn't know that you guys actually bow fish the lake. So they thought they were going to come in and be able to bow fish the lake that hadn't been bow fished in 10 or 20 years, or back to 57, I don't know. <clears throat> that was uh, another big reason we had so many. But 128 shooters is uh, that's up there level. That's a national level tournament there. So to do that on a local deal is uh, pretty impressive. Um, I didn't have the numbers, but I think only I don't know 20 to 25 percent of those shooters are actually TBA members. So that kind of shows that uh, there's a lot more bow fishermen out there than we even realize as an organization. Uh, we're hoping to round those up. The TBA wants to be there to teach these other people coming in, uh, you know, to try to limit or completely eliminate actually any fish dumping. Uh, we do frown on that. And we're trying to teach the new people coming in, you know, to be a little bit more responsible. <clears throat> and that's really about all I have. Yeah.